Hello guys, welcome to Hankins Custom Rifles, Hank's Precision Gun Parts, and another episode of Hank's TV. Today is March the 22nd, it's Friday afternoon, it's almost 7 o'clock. Uh, everybody's gone home, shop's quieted down, hopefully the phones won't ring. Uh, we've got a little video to bring to you today, some more stuff on primer modules. Now i got some more primer modules back in the mail from a customer he called me and asked me what the problem was and I told him and asked him if he would send me a few of these and he said he would so that I could use them to make this video with now this customer was a super nice guy he was very polite didn't try to lay the blame off onto me or anybody else like uh, the one guy did here last week when we did the video on the pusher stem if you guys haven't seen that you need to go back and look at it but what we have is some primer modules that's been bell mouthed and I'm going to show you those and what happens and why they get bell mount. <clears throat> so, we've got these primers and some guys are using their reloading press to knock the primers out. And that'll work if it's the right die and the pin on the decapper is long enough. So, we're going to show you a couple of dies that'll work, a couple that won't work. And... Um, Hopefully you guys won't do this at home yourself, or you can get the little hammer kit that I sell to knock out the primers. You can take it to the bench. You don't need a reloading press. You don't need anything but a handheld priming tool to put the primers back in. So we've got two primers here for standard gun, and we've got two primers here for the 4570 bolt face. These are the standard bolt face 308, these are the 4570s, 308, uh, 4570 bolt face, sorry about that there. And um, what we've got, we've got one that's been fired, but the primer's never been knocked out. And he said that will go in his breech plug, no problem. We've got another one that's been fired and it's been deprimed. And he said now it won't fit in his breech plug. If you guys can look close enough, at the top of this primer module, it's bell mouthed. Now what causes that is the decapping rod that he's using to knock these out. And I asked him what he's using, and he's using a universal, it's an RCBS universal decapping rod. So apparently the universal decapping rod won't work very well or won't work at all on the primer modules so here's another one this is the 4570 that he's got this one the primer's been knocked out this one's been knocked out and put back in and then if you can look at it the one that has the primer knocked out and put back in has a bell mouth on it So if we take a breech plug, this here's just a random breech plug I just got off the shelf as a brand new plug. We can take the module that's not been primed or used and it goes in the plug. No problem goes in there. We take the one that he has deprimed and reprimed and it won't even begin to start. So you can see the bell mouth on it. Now I've got some reloading dies and I've already went through these and kind of figured out which ones work and which ones won't work to save time for the video. And if you guys have reloading dies at home and you want to use them to knock out the primers, it'll work sometimes. So let's start with this one. This is a 300 Winchester short mag. This is a Hornady die. And every Hornady die that I tried would work. So I'm going to pull the decapping pin stem out of here. And I'm going to show you. So if you was to take this decapping pin, I'm going to come up here close to the camera and hopefully it will focus on what we want. And you was to push it in here, it's going to hit that primer and knock it out. Now... The expander ball bottoms out inside the primer module before it hits the mouth of the car of this little primer module. If you guys can see that. 
Okay, so on a Hornady die, the way their decap or their expander ball is made and the decapping pin, it's long enough, it's going to it's going to work because it's going to hit the bottom of the primer module before it bell mouths. All right, so now let's look at the 22 caliber. This is a 22-250 reloading die. Let's pull the stem out of it. And let's do the same comparison. And we know by looking at this that this one's going to work. So if you're using a 22 caliber, it's going to work. So this will fit all the way through. This one's got the primer in it still. So this will fit all the way through and never hit the mouth of the primer module. This being the mouth right here. Goes all the way through, won't hit it. That's a 22 caliber. So that'll work fine. 22 calibers, RCBS will work fine. Let's look at a 7 millimeter Remington Ultra Mag. Let's pull this decapping stem out and we'll do the same thing. Now you can see the 7 millimeter, how it's made right here. It's tapered because it's a lot bigger. It's got to open the, it's going to resize the neck of a 7 millimeter cartridge. So if you was to shove this through there and you was to shove it too far, it's going to bell mouth the primer module. This is exactly what's happening with this guy's dies. That's almost a perfect match to the bell mouth on this little uh, primer module. So 7 millimeter won't work. It's going to bell mouth it. Now if we go to a 30 caliber on an RCBS, this is for a 300 wind mag, and we was to use one of them, the 30 caliber is even bigger. So if you push this in there, the pin is long enough. You see that? That pin is long enough to knock out the primer before it collides with the mouth of the, of the end of this stem right here. But if you're not set just right, and most people aren't, they've got this pin coming way too far out of the cartridge. So if you just go in and use the die the way it was set up to knock the primers out of the 300 wind magnum cases, then you're going to collide this expander ball into the mouth of the case and completely crush it. And then it's going to ruin the case. So... Any of you guys that are using reloading dies to knock out the primer modules, just be aware that that can happen if you're using the wrong die. So make sure you've got the right die or make sure it's adjusted correctly and that the decapping pin is long enough to knock the primer out before it collides into the mouth of the case. Now, I do sell this little kit on my website I sell a bunch of them, so a lot of guys like them. It comes to you in a bag like this, and I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And this thing is as handy as a pocket on a shirt because you can take it to the range, you can knock your primers out on the bench, and you can re-prime your modules with a handheld priming tool like a Lee that I showed you guys in the last video or an RCBS priming tool. So what you would do is you're going to take a primer that's been fired. This is a fired one. And we'll set that right here in this decapping stand. And you'll take this little hammer that comes with it. You'll take your punch that also comes with the kit. Take the punch, set it in the hair just like that and a tap or two knocks the primer right out. So now we have a deep prime module. There's nobody here but they heard that hammer hit that table and they think somebody's knocking on the door. So they have to bark and go see who's here. 
So the primers all are caught in this little cap. This little decapping stand's hollow underneath. So you can catch all your primers, sweep them off into your hands, throw them away, whatever you want to do with them. And the punch is designed in such a way that even if you was to push it all the way in, it's not going to bell mouth your primer modules. It'll go all the way to the bottom of the primer module without bell mouthing. The pin's long enough to knock it out. The taper of the punch is small enough to go into the primer module. So I just wanted to show you that, guys. Um, I put this reloading press on the bench again just to maybe show you, but I don't think we really need to do it in the reloading press. You guys pretty much understand what I'm trying to tell you here. So if any of y'all having this problem, there's what the problem is. So try not to do that. And buy one of these little hammer kits. Take it to the range with you. It's cheaper than four or five of these primer modules. So if you run four or five primer modules because you don't have the hammer kit and you have to replace the primer modules, you'd be money ahead if you buy the hammer kit. Just go ahead, stick it in your possibles box keep it with you at all times take it to the range you never know when you might need it so that's it for this we got this video fellas and we'll see you on the next one